everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Carla, and I am the Education and Development Coordinator here at NeedyMed. And we are excited to be presenting today's Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs, Web Drugs Webinar, focusing on five ways for patients to lower prescription costs. Before we get started, I just want to make sure everybody is familiar with NeedyMeds. We are a national nonprofit. Profit. And as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, our mission statement is the dedication to education, edu education and empowering those seeking affordable health care. We achieve our mission through three primary avenues, by providing information on health care programs, by offering direct assistance, and of course, by facilitating programs both through our website and our toll-free helpline. As I said, today our webinar is focusing on ways to save on prescription meds. And our panelist that we are thrilled to have take over and join us today is Ginger Skinner, who is the Associate Editor for Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs. Ginger has worked for Best Buy Drugs since the project's early days and currently has a pretty full plate writing primarily about drug quality, cost, and safety issues. And she also manages the project's social media efforts, which does include collaborative, collaborative outreach work with partner organizations, patient advocates, and bloggers. Before I pass it over to Ginger to get started on what is no doubt going to be a very robust and informative webinar, I'm gonna bring to your attention just a few housekeeping tips. As far as technical issues go, if you do have difficulty hearing myself or Ginger, Ginger, please send me a message either in the questions or for some of you the chat section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Please be advised that we are recording this webinar and when it's finished, we will certainly follow up with you to answer questions and also to provide you with copies of our PowerPoint presentation. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to go ahead and switch over the mic and my screen to Ginger so she can get started on the webinar. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carla, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, as Carla said, I'm Ginger Skinner. I'm one of the editors at Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs. Most of you have probably heard of Consumer Reports Magazine. And some of you might even be subscribers, or so I hope. But you might be a little less familiar with Best Buy Drugs. Simply put, Best Buy Drugs is a public education project. It's grant funded, and it's aimed at offering unbiased, evidence-based drug information and advice to consumers on prescription medicines. And in doing that, something else we aim to do is to empower people to have these regular conversations with their doctors about their drug costs, as well as safety and effectiveness. That said, I'm happy to be here today presenting with Needy Meds and everyone else listening here on the line. And today I'm gonna to talk about our most recent prescription drug poll, what we uncovered in that poll, and what we can all do to lower the cost of our medication. We've all seen the headlines about exorbitant drug prices for, say, hepatitis C and cancer drugs and maybe some other smaller classes of these very expensive drugs that we know as specialty drugs. But lately, we're hearing more and more about drug price increases that show us that we're dealing with something much more pervasive and something much more difficult to solve. As you all know, last year, Martin Screlly, who's pictured here of Touring Pharmaceuticals, shocked us all when he raised the price of this little known toxoplasmosis drug called Daraprim. Screlly raised the price overnight from something like $13.50 to $750 per pill. 
And this year, we've all turned our attention to the skyrocketing price of the life-saving treatment EpiPen. In this case, the drug maker Mylan increased the auto-injector's price by more than 500% in less than a decade. And we're talking about an old medication here, epinephrine. It literally cost pennies to make. But prices are rising for some other drugs as well. We're talking old medications that have been very inexpensive for decades. And even cheap generics that, as you know, we often turn to to keep our drug costs as low as possible. To get at how much people are paying for their prescriptions and the impact that these rising costs are having on their lives, in March of this year, Consumer Reports conducted a poll where we asked more than 2,000 adults who take medications on a regular basis questions about their drug costs and the actions they're taking to afford them. Our poll found that on average, Americans are spending nearly $800 out of pocket every year, and they take nearly five medications each. We also found that a considerable number of those that we polled, around 11%, spend more than $1,200 out of pocket per year. And when I say out of pocket, I'm talking about the price that they're paying after their insurance coverage. When we asked about price increases, nearly one third said they'd experienced a price hike on at least one of their medications in the past year. And while the average increase was around $63 over the price they previously paid, 13% said they paid an extra $100 or more out of pocket. And of those, only about a fifth of people told us that they knew about that increase in advance. Our poll uncovered something else too, something perhaps not so surprising. When people can't afford their prescriptions, they cut back on those medicines in some potentially dangerous ways. Nearly a third of people who experience a price hike on a drug told us they had to skimp on groceries in order to have money for their prescriptions. People also reported relying very heavily on their credit cards and putting off other, paying other bills. And one in 10 people facing higher drug costs, they told us they postponed their retirement in order to maintain their health care coverage. And one third of people in our poll, they told us they didn't comply with their prescription in some way in order to save money. They skipped filling prescriptions, or they didn't take the prescribed dosage without telling their doctor or pharmacist. They split pills without getting it okayed by their doctor or pharmacist. They even took expired medicines or shared prescriptions with other people in order to save money. And that's not all. People who experienced these surprise drug price increases also faced some other significant financial setbacks. More than one out of four people who reported experiencing a who reported apologies. More than one out of four people who reported experiencing a costly medical event. They were also more likely than those not facing higher costs to report that they couldn't afford their medical bills, they missed major bill payments, and even lost their health coverage altogether. So as prices for many prescription drugs continue to skyrocket, is there anything that we can do to keep our costs low as consumers? While it's true that much of what's going on behind the scenes with drug pricing is pretty much out of our hands, Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs has identified five clear strategies that can help you navigate the system and make sure that you don't get stuck paying too much for your medicines. Mm -hmm. 
Number one, talk to your doctor about cost. This might seem obvious, but in our poll, we found that despite the clear toll of rising drug prices, only 6% of people currently taking a prescription drug found out about the cost of that new drug during a doctor's visit, when in fact that prescription was being written. On the other hand, 63% told us they found out about the price for the first time when they picked it up at the pharmacy. And patients aren't the only ones who aren't speaking up about costs. In a separate poll where we questioned 200 internal medicine doctors, we found that while doctors say they worry about affordability for their patients, when it comes to having the necessary conversations with their patients about drug costs, they're really falling short. We also found that when that conversation about costs does indeed happen, it's patients who are more likely to initiate it, not their doctors. So many times the, the onus is really on the patient. If you're worried about the cost of your drugs and the cost of your treatments, you have to speak up and you have to ask some questions. For one, when your doctor writes a new prescription, you want to make sure it's a generic. If it's not, ask if you can switch to one. Choosing generics over branding drugs can save you as much as 90%. And studies consistently show that in a large majority of cases, generics are just as safe and effective as their branded counterparts. While it's true that some generics are going up in price, choosing generics over brand name drugs is still a tried and true way to get a cheaper price at the pharmacy. If a generic isn't available for you, you should ask your doctor or your pharmacist for a lower cost drug in the same class of drugs that works just as well and is just as safe, something called a therapeutic substitution. For some medications, you might also want to request a 90-day prescription rather than a 30-day one. This can not only save you those extra trips to the pharmacy, it can also save you on two copays. And over time, those little savings can really add up. Number two, you want to make sure your drug is covered by your insurance. In our poll, people who experienced a drug price increase gave a variety of explanations for why they thought their costs were rising on their drugs. And the most popular belief was that their drug price just increased. Fewer people in our poll said that their insurance plan increased their deductible or that their plan reduced coverage or stopped covering the medicine. Yet something you might not know is that your insurance plan can change the list of drugs it covers, also known as the formulary, at any time during your plan year. So adding or dropping drugs or just moving and shuffling them around, um, moving them from a lower cost sharing tier to a higher one, and all those changes can raise your out-of-pocket costs. That's why it's extra important to keep an eye on your formulary and work with your doctor to get drugs that are on your formulary. If it turns out that your drug isn't covered, you should go to your doctor and ask them to prescribe a different drug that's on your formulary that will work just as well. If that's not an option for you, you should ask your doctor to petition your insurance company to cover the drug. If it turns out that your insurer denies that request, you can file an appeal. As we near open enrollment period, it's equally important that as you're shopping for plans, that you compare what those plans offer rather than auto renewing. And whenever possible, you wanna choose a plan that adequately covers the drugs and the care that you'll need in the coming year. There's no guarantee, but it helps if you take the time before you have to enroll to just compare those, 
the prices and the plan offerings. Tip number three, shop around and negotiate. This is a big one because our poll found that despite the cost increase on their prescriptions, almost all of the respondents we spoke with filled the prescription anyway. And most of them filled it at the original pharmacy. But that's, I mean, you don't have to do that. You don't have to simply fill it and walk away. There are other options. Consumer Reports' secret shoppers have found time and time again that prescription drug prices can vary widely from one pharmacy to the next, even in the same zip code, which matters most if you end up paying for your medications out of pocket or you have a very high copay. So before you settle on a pharmacy and start filling all your prescriptions there, we recommend calling or stopping by two or more pharmacies and asking for the lowest price on your medication. And don't forget, you want to check independent pharmacies as well because sometimes uh, those smaller independent pharmacies can have a little more freedom when it comes to matching or lowering prices. You can sometimes find their prices may even be cheaper than chain pharmacies. We also recommend that once you settle on a pharmacy that you like and that offers you low prices on your medications, you want to try as much as possible to fill your prescriptions at that one pharmacy. That way the pharmacist can uh, know your full prescription record and can flag any potentially dangerous drug interactions or duplications. Tip number four, put your insurance card away and consider paying cash. Here's why. Many retailers, Costco, Kmart, Walgreens, Walmart, and some other ones, they offer these programs called drug discount programs, and they offer hundreds of generics for as low as $3 for a 30-day supply, $9 for a three-month supply. And if you're, let's say your copay is $10, that $3 for a 30-day supply will be much cheaper. And if, so, you, you, you get where I'm going, you can, this is all going to add up over time. While it seems small, it does add up. In our prescription drug poll, we asked people about actions they were taking to afford their health care, and the number one response was using a pharmacy's generic drug discount program. So the next, thing, the next time you pick up a prescription, you want to ask your pharmacist before you pay for the drug, will my prescription be cheaper if I don't use my insurance? There are just a few things that you want to keep in mind when you're using these drug discount programs at pharmacies. Some of these programs charge a sign-up fee. Sometimes it's a one-time fee for an annual membership, but you want to factor that into your final cost and see if it's worth it to you to sign up. Also, not all these programs are valid for people who have Medicare, Medicaid, and TRICARE insurance. And also, if you're paying cash, that means you're bypassing your insurance, so that prescription won't count toward your health plan deductible, which is maybe really important if you have a high deductible health plan. Tip number five, look online. Sounds like an obvious one. Our poll revealed that while most people ask their pharmacist about their drug's cost, nearly one-fifth reported checking a drug pricing website. And again, while it might seem obvious, very, it might seem obvious to research prices online, only 5% turned to the internet to find cheaper medications in response to their higher drug prices. If you end up paying for your drugs out of pocket, one thing you can do before you head to the pharmacy and fill your prescription is stop and check and compare prices on a comparison website like goodrx.com. 
where you can also find out about discounts, which can come in handy if your insurance doesn't cover the medications you need. You can also fill a prescription with a low-cost online ph pharmacy, but make sure it's based in the U.S. One example is healthwarehouse.com. You want to be really careful when you're shopping online for drugs, since only around 4% of online pharmacies actually operate legally. One way to tell if an online pharmacy is legit, you want to look for the VIPPS symbol, which is pictured here on this slide. That symbol shows that the pharmacy is a verified internet pharmacy practice site and that it's accredited by the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. Something else you can do if you're shopping online or comparing prices online is you can use needy meds to look up a prescription assistance or diagnosis-based financial aid program. Prescription assistance programs are basically designed to provide free or discounted medicines to people who can't afford them. These programs are especially helpful for people who don't have prescription drug coverage and who meet certain income requirements in most cases. To find one, you simply visit the Patient Savings tab on NeedyMeds.org and click on, click on Prescription Assistance. There, there you're going to find everything you need in order to find one, near, find one that fits your needs and sign up. On the same page, you can also click on Diagnosis Specific and you'll find financial aid programs specific to your diagnosis. For example, you'll find programs for asthma, glaucoma, diabetes, food allergies, osteoporosis, and more. You can also, if you just go to Needy Med's homepage, you can also find those same programs simply by typing in the name of your drug in the drug search search box. So it's really easy. That'll return results for all the programs that are available to you simply by putting in the name of your drug. I just want to give one quick example of how these tips can work in a real life scenario. For a moment, let's look at, uh, I mentioned earlier EpiPen and EpiPen pricing. If you need EpiPen and let's say it's well covered by your insurance, you're in luck. But if you get stuck with high out-of-pocket costs, let's say you have a high deductible or your insurance doesn't cover EpiPen, you should check cash prices for EpiPen online. Again, if you, if you check on GoodRx.com, for example, you'll find that prices for EpiPen are around $600 or more for a two-pack is really high. But then if you're there, you can also find that there's a cheaper generic alternative. It's called generic adrenoclick. And you can find it at several pharmacies for several hundred dollars less than EpiPen. We actually found it for as low as $144 at Walmart after a discount. You might want to call up your pharmacy before you go in with that discount and just make sure they accept it and that they have generic adrenoclick in stock. That's another step. You should know that generic adrenoclick is the exact same drug, epinephrine, and the exact same dosage as EpiPen. It's just delivered by a different auto-injector. But by talking to your doctor or your pharmacist about switching your prescription to this cheaper generic, you could save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on your out-of-pocket cost for epinephrine. I want to quickly recap. We've talked about the five things that consumers can do to lower their prescription drug costs. And number one is you want to make sure every time your doctor prescribes a medication or every time you feel like your costs are going up, you want to make sure you talk to your doctor about costs and see what he or she can do to help you keep them low. 
Number two, you want to make sure that your insurance is covering your med medications and covering them adequately. Especially around open enrollment time, you want to make sure you take some time to research plans and compare options to make sure you're getting the coverage you need. Number three, it's really important before you fill that prescription, shop around and negotiate. Check with multiple pharmacies. You don't have to go in. You can call up pharmacies. I've done it before and just ask, you know, what is this prescription going to cost me? You just have to give them the name of the drug and the dosage and they should be able to tell you. Number four, put your insurance card away and in some cases ask your pharmacist, what will this cost if I pay cash? Number five, this one seems like an obvious one again, but we're finding that some people just aren't doing it. Look online before you fill a prescription and compare prices. And in some cases, you can even fill that prescription at a cheaper online pharmacy. That concludes uh, my presentation on drug savings tips. If you want more information, you can visit www.crbestbydrug.org. You can also find us on social media, on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you have questions that you'd like me to take offline, I'm happy to answer anything that I, I don't know if I can answer everything, but I'm happy to try to find the answer for you. My email address is gskinner at consumer.org. That's gskinner at consumer.org. Again, that concludes my presentation. Now um, let's go back to Carla and we can take some of your questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ginger. That was, as expected, very um, chock full of information. And I can see certainly that I can account for this, that this is a topic that touches myself, my family members, and my friends. Um, and I would imagine that um, everybody that's listening in today, if they're not directly affected, they know someone who is. So I appreciate your breaking down the simple steps, really, to go ahead and make a huge financial impact and make our lives a lot easier. I'm going to ask you, Ginger, if you haven't done it already, um, if you could go ahead and offer to change the presenter back to me. And then what I can talk to you guys about is just a few other things. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Are just a few other things to highlight not only what Ginger spoke about, but ways hopefully that needy meds can piggyback onto some of the cost savings solutions. Very briefly, I will mention prescription assistance programs because Ginger did perfectly explain that. And they are programs usually offered by pharmaceutical companies to offer deeply discounted prices for drugs. And it was interesting, Ginger, what you said in the beginning that if have a doctor attempt to negotiate with your insurance company the prices and if that doesn't work or to have it covered and if that doesn't work to appeal. Some of those common sense steps of advocating for yourself is something that we really preach all the time at Needy Meds. And that comes down to when you're also looking for prescription assistance programs or either diagnosis-based assistance programs, where I'll just get to that in a moment, we always recommend if you cannot find a prescription assistance program, or let's say you do and you don't fill into the, fall into the eligibility requirements, we always suggest that you call and renegotiate your case with another representative. If you're still denied, we suggest you officially appeal with the program or if you are still denied at that point, or if there is no PAP available for that drug, we actually recommend you call the pharmaceutical company directly and speak with them about offering you a discounted price. As Ginger also mentioned, Needy Meds website will allow you to search for diagnosis-based assistance programs. And how those mostly differ, as Ginger said, is they're often 
coupons, rebates, discounts, and other financial assistance for additional costs associated with illnesses or health care instead of medications. And what I mean by that is if you're looking for, let's say, med durable medical equipment or copay assistance or sometimes even things like wigs or house cleaning services or let's say travel expenses to a doctor or specialized facility. Those are the type of financial programs you'll find under our DBA database. And finally, I would love to take a moment just to talk about the Nini Med drug discount card. Um, as you know, as Ginger knows very well, there are a number of them available out there. Needy Meds might be one of the only people that hosts a drug discount card, and we hope you don't actually have to use it. Our goal is that you're well, hopefully, you're well covered and your family is well covered to begin with. If not, our, our primary goal is to actually hook you up directly with a program that will help you. But if none of those options work for you, we do have the safety net of a drug discount card. And the great thing about ours is it is free, it is anonymous, you can share it with your family and friends, it never expires. And we pride ourselves on the fact that although, of course, we do absorb a very nominal transaction fee, we maximize the savings to our consumer, not the profits that we generate. I will stress that our drug discount card is only valid to use at brick and mortar pharmacies. It cannot be used online. But I did really appreciate the fact that oftentimes people will look at a drug discount card option and say, I don't need that because you're, you have insurance. But as Ginger pointed out so aptly, you may want to consider paying cash and then paying cash with the drug discount card advantage because you may find a much more competitive rate for your generic or brand name meds at your local pharmacy. Or you may simply have insurance coverage and find out that your co-payments um, or your insurance coverage portion of it for your filling your drug prescription is too high and it often works for people that actually maybe you do have insurance coverage for prescriptions but you've exceeded the cap for the year or maybe you find yourself in a donut hole like the Medicare Part D. Um, so there's a number of options where people that might have insurance coverage will actually turn to paying for their medications with cash and using a drug discount card. I'll also point out that on the Needy Meds website, there's a couple of other things you might find useful. As Ginger pointed out, it's really important to comparison shop. So on the Needy Meds website, you can do two important things while you're still sitting at home. You can compare local pharmacies that already accept the Needy Meds drug discount card and you can figure out what the average cost of the price of the drug will be through our recently updated drug pricing calculator. I also want to stress that the last thing we ever want is somebody to have to find out how to negotiate our website on their own. We don't want you struggling or having a hard time. So I always stress to pick up the phone and call our experts on our toll-free helpline right there on your screen, it's 1-800-503-6897. We are available 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. We're on the East Coast, we're Eastern Standard Time, but we really are standing by hoping to give you, your family, and your coworkers all the help that you need. I would, of course, thank Ginger again for joining us, and I'll take a moment to take some questions that have already popped up and give you a moment to type some if there's anything you're interested in that we have not yet covered. Ginger, I do see there's a couple of questions coming through and um, these are ones that I could actually handle. We have a, a couple of inquiries regarding whether or not this presentation will be available after it's finished. And the great thing is yes. Um, one of the things that we will do here at Needy Meds is we'll take this webinar and convert it into a video and we'll put it in our YouTube page. I would imagine that would be up and running by the beginning of next week. The other thing is that if you are interested, 
we would be more than happy to email you PowerPoint presentations of both my portion or the Needy Meds portion of the webinar, as well as the more informative PowerPoint presentation that Ginger reviewed during our time together. Sounds great. So I still see a few other questions coming in, and we'll stress here again, as Ginger and I both mentioned, we're going to do our best to get to most of these questions, but don't, um, don't worry if we don't have a moment to do that this afternoon. If your question is a little bit more in depth or we simply don't have time, please rest assured that Ginger or myself will follow up with you again, and that will be in the next couple of days. So let's see what other questions we have coming through. So here's a great question. Somebody used whether or not the needy meds drug discount card can be used in conjunction with your insurance. And that's a really important point. Thank you for bringing it up. Unfortunately, you can only use our drug discount card instead of insurance. And again, um, there's, as we just reviewed, there's going to be a number of scenarios why you might want to do that. So here's, here's another interesting one, and we'll, we'll take, I might pass this along to you, Ginger. We have um, a great question asking somebody, how do we suggest educating individuals on using cash versus insurance? Basically, when a lot of people in the healthcare field have been preaching having insurance to avoid tax penalties. Um, I'll go ahead and say one of the things that we do as needy meds, one of a piece of our an important piece of our mission statement is not only the empowering, but the education of people and healthcare professionals around how to become the most strong advocate for you or the people you represent. So I would say the only thing that we can do really is do our best at Needy Med to provide various educational tools. And what that looks like is in addition to conducting monthly overview webinars, as well as any time we can, special topic webinars, we do our best with social media outreach, and we have educational materials that we hand out and distribute on, at, at a pretty astounding rate. And as you know, everything we do here at Needy Meds is free and at no charge to our patients or any other partners or healthcare professionals. Ginger, did you have anything else to add regarding that that question? Sure. I mean, your you know, Carla, your response was spot on. It's a great answer. Um, something we do so. Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs is a part of Consumer Reports. So we produce content. We produce a magazine, and of course, we also have a website where we consistently uh, write about, if you visit www.crbestbydrugs, you'll see that we consistently are writing about how to lower your drug prices. It's probably the main thing that we write about. And within those articles, one of the things that we're constantly recommending to people are these tips that I laid out today, including um, how to use cash instead of your insurance. I mean, we recommend that for people, for example, who really have high costs and their insurance doesn't quite cut it. So they may end up with a higher than expected copay. And we really do walk people through how to do this in our articles. So I definitely recommend whoever asked that question to visit our website. And also, you can feel free to email me, gscanner at consumer.org. But like Carla said, we also have a very robust social media presence where we're constantly suggesting these tips to people. We also produce videos. And we partner with organizations like Needy Meds to help get the word out and to consistently educate people. And just to remind people to I mean, this is your health care. You're paying for it. These are your medications. You're paying for it. You should feel empowered to speak up, even if you're a person who normally wouldn't. 
it's something that actually more and more doctors are saying they want to hear from patients and pharmacists are also you know pharmacists are also there for you they're not just there to ring you up at the pharmacy counter they're actually there to answer your questions if you get to the pharmacy and you're perplexed by the cost or you just have questions about safety or if you need a minute to decide before you pay for your prescriptions you that's an option that is available to you and I recommend stepping aside or saying to the pharmacist do you mind when you're finished ringing up other people or whatever if I could have a 10 minute conversation with you about my medication and if it's a good pharmacist they should go to bat for you. They should look up what's going on with your medication. They should be able to tell you what it's going to cost, cash versus insurance. They should also be able to look up other discounts that might be available to you. Like if you don't have a pharmacist that's willing to do that, I recommend finding a new pharmacy. That's my answer. That's fantastic, and that covered quite a bit. And um, I think. As Ginger said, these are the things that we at um, Best Buy Drugs and at Needy Meds are really focused on, and those are things that we attempt to do and hopefully do a well and will continue to do. Um, but there are some things you, as either just individuals who are attempting to empower yourselves and become even more informed medical consumers, or those of you listening in on the webinar today who are actually in the healthcare field, um, First of all, you're already helping to do it by making yourself aware and participating in webinars and informational sessions such as this. So I would certainly say as an individual, make sure you're posting about needy meds or Best Buy drugs with these tips online. Make sure you're sharing all of the free resources that we have to offer you, including webinars, training courses, educational materials. Make sure not only are you reaching out to us to get that information, but that you're certainly sharing it with your coworkers. We also at Needy Meds, if you are anyone is interested, we do have something called a volunteer ambassador program, which is essentially representing Needy Meds in your community to make sure that people are empowered and educated when it comes to healthcare related issues. So thank you so much. Um, we do have one other question that I think this will probably be the last question we have time to take this afternoon. Um, for those of you that have other questions, again, feel free to type them in and we will address them probably by tomorrow or the beginning of next week via email. Certainly, if you think of anything else after the webinar has ended, you can feel free to email me and or Ginger directly. Our emails are right on, hopefully right on your screen at the moment. And the last question we're going to take is we have someone specifically looking for um, any tips for providing assistance to patients that need uh, help paying for maybe incontinence supplies or insulin. Um, the reason I'm addressing this is that although it may be specific to this particular person's situation, there is um, a blanket answer that I can give. Always start out, if you have the name of the drug, whether a brand or generic, by looking in the search box on the Needy Meds website under Prescription Assistance Programs. If it's something such as supplies, you're going to want to do the same thing under our diagnosis-based assistance programs database. And always turn to the, our call counselors, their experts, at the 800 number for you. Um, Ginger, did you want to add anything to that? That's an, you know, that's a great answer. Again, um, I was going to recommend. I mean, I knew that you would probably recommend it, but I was going to recommend definitely typing in the name of your, your, your insulin or your supplies into the Needy Meds uh, search box on, the home, on your home page. Um, insulin prices, we hear from, I, I don't know how many, I'll say dozens of people about exorbitant insulin costs. And um, again, this is very similar to EpiPen in that insulin is a very, very old drug. Um, and it's just increased at astronomical levels um, over the past several years. And we hear from people all the time who say, you know, I need this drug, I need this insulin 
to stay alive, is there anything you can recommend? And again, one thing we do recommend is looking at prescription assistance programs. If that's something that works for you, great. The other thing that you can do, and this is not, again, this is not a blanket answer. A lot of you may say, oh no, that won't work for me. So I, I totally understand that. This is not a blanket answer because everybody's different and, and there are all these different forms of insulin and different names. Um, there are some cases in which you want to talk to your doctor about the possibility of switching insulin. Again, I know that's not a good idea for everyone, but in some cases, like if you're taking an older intermediate acting formulation, for example, you might be able to switch from Humulin to Novolin. You want to talk to your doctor, though, about the risk involved, if there are any risks. Um, so that could be an option. Switching could be an option for some people. It's not going to work for everyone, but a lot of insurance companies now are covering one insulin and dropping the other one. So this is a very tricky landscape to navigate, which, you know, again, it comes into play when you're looking for a new health plan. You want to look on that drug, that drug plan's formulary and see if it's going to cover your insulin next year. If it's not, you might want to consider switching, especially since this is a drug that you're going to need probably for the rest of your life. Something else you can do is there are some um, price variations from one pharmacy to the next. Uh, so you may be able to do some research online comparing costs. Uh, we do know that for example, if you take Novolin in, there is a program that's offered, as far as I know, it's only offered by Walmart. Well, you can get Novolin for only $25. It could be that other pharmacies have similar programs. So you want to, you might want to call around to some pharmacies. If you can, do some research online. Um, but I would definitely recommend the first thing you want to do is probably talk to your doctor. Is that go back to that tip number one and talk to your doctor and say, you know, these costs are really impacting my bottom line. Is there any other option for me, any other safe, effective option for me in terms of the insulin I can take? I hope that helped. Fantastic. Thank you so much again, Ginger, for this very informative presentation and as I said it's a really crucial one at this time because it affects pretty much everybody and uh, for those of you that took time out of what is no doubt a busy day to learn about how to save money on prescription costs to, to take the time to learn about consumer reports best buy drugs and to listen to a little bit about how needy meds can hopefully help you. We do deeply appreciate your time and we both very much look forward to keeping touch. I will say again, um, we will follow up with you and let you know when this presentation will be turned into a video and converted and uploaded onto our YouTube site. And we will certainly pass along PowerPoint presentations from this webinar so you can refer to them in the future. For those of you that we haven't had the chance to answer your questions in this webinar because we are out of time, please know that we will follow up with you personally within the next couple of days. Thank you, Ginger, and thank you all for taking your time this afternoon. We'll thank be in you. touch. Take thank care. You.